Welcome to Guadalajara. So basically I went from Trinidad to Boston for a couple days with six inches of snow and uh, now I'm here in uh, Guadalajara, Mexico for Don Julio. Yeah. Kind of a big change. I did not expect the bumpy dirt road going to the <laughs> so this is This is what I expected to do. <laughs> so the uh, first step is uh, the agave fields. So I'm now properly adorned <laughs> for the agave because you have to have the, the right El Hibador hat. Most of us, when we think about tequila, we say, well, I want to know where it is made and we think immediately in Tequila Town. Between Guadalajara and Puerto Vallarta, you will find Tequila Town. That's where all tequila started, okay? All the story. Now, if you see Guadalajara and you go the opposite way, you will go to the highlands, that's where we are. To make tequila, you can make it only in one part of Mexico. Now, we're in the highlands of Jalisco, and the first thing that you will find is this type of soil. Now, all the plantations of Don Julio come from this region. We do not own the land. That's something that is important because we only own the agaves. The instrument he uses is called coa. In the morning, one in the afternoon. Have also uh, kill them, and then they will take it out for the truck kind of opening. <laughs> 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 it's like butter. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot heavier. Yeah. yeah. So Enrique, how, how often do you come out to the fields? Rarely. Once a week. No, no, no. Really? Once a week. How much of your job encompasses before the bean is even harvested? Is it a good amount? Mm, yes, it's a lot. How many new plants are you planting a year? And that all depends, but we can see the average is around. Now this May, because we planted the, between May to March to, to May. This year we will plant uh, one million seven hundred thousand. It's not stopping in directions, it's guys with guns. <laughs> Although I'm sure they know where they're helping them. Finally here at the uh, Don Julio Distillery and we're gonna walk around. You may not be able to hear because we've been given these things uh, for us to hear. So I don't know what the audio is gonna be like, but um, We'll see. When I went to Don Julio, they, you know, I was wearing those headphone things. Um, we were about to go and do the tour, and uh, they said no photos, no video, dangerous because of the vapors. So uh, for a moment there, I thought we weren't going to be able to actually shoot anything at Don Julio, but I got the okay, and we were able to shoot what you're about to see. Um, the problem though is you can't really hear very much. It's a very loud kind of distillery. Lots going on. So I'm gonna help kind of describe what you're seeing while you're seeing it. So you kind of have an idea of what's going on. Basically, the process for Don Julio is this. They have the agave plant, which they cut in the fields. These are called piñas, and these piñas are loaded up onto these trucks. Each person uh, cuts about like maybe 100, 150 of these piñas a day, and uh, they're brought to the distillery. So you have this big mountain of piñas at the distillery, and uh, it's, really, it's it's something really pretty exceptional to see all these piñas. So the piñas are all sort of of different sizes, and um, so they have to basically cut them up into sort of similar sizes before they put them into these autoclaves. So they're, they're unloading the piñas here, and they get cut up over there, and then if you look kind of over there, those are the autoclaves. So they're cooking cooking the agave back there, it's, it's actually quite cool. Um, the actual agave itself doesn't taste very sweet, so it's kind of like a potato. They cook the piñas, and when they cook those piñas, the transformation really takes place, and they go from this, you know, white, 
sort of starchy substance to a brown, very lush, very sweet. Uh, in the center of the piña is the heart, and, it, and you can actually eat it sort of like a sweet potato. And the outsides are these fibers, and the fibers you can kind of chew on, and out comes this wonderful nectar. To get that nectar, they basically shred the agave plant. Um, they, they, you know, they crush and shred, and that extracts all of that uh, agave out of it, out of that sweet agave. It's quite impressive. I didn't realize kind of like how much volume they get from all these piñas. So they take that agave water and they ferment it. They add yeast and it sits in these tanks and ferments. It makes sort of like a beer, uh, an agave beer. I would say, I would say that's considerably hot, much, much hotter than a lot of the other fermentations. All the flavors and aromas are produced here. Okay, the rest of the process is quite very important, but the real inside is made of fermentation. We don't add, we don't add another sugar. We don't add more alcohol outside, okay? We, we must do it and certificate it. So in the fermentation tank that was really hot, Yeah. is that is that all natural heat from that one? All natural heat. So what happens there, again, as I answered there, we have in one milliliter, at the beginning, 50 millions in one milliliter. Mm -hmm. There is 24,000 liters. Then imagine how many little bodies are there. The thing is that your body transform energy from the food, and then your body increase half a degree or one degree when you are eating. Okay, in order to start to process. Here it happens the same. Billions and billions and billions take half a, a degree of temperature more, but with those millions are what they produce that energy that you felt there. Very much like scotch or bourbon, you've got you know this this fermented matter, which then they distill. They distill twice uh, and they make their head cuts, which is the elements in the uh, tequila that you really don't want to drink, it gives you the hangover and makes you sick. And then the tail part, which are kind of the heavy, fatty things that, that kind of weigh down the tequila. So the clean part of the tequila really is in the center. And in the distillery, there are a, a ton of stills. Um, you've got kind of two rows, you've got like 10, I think it's like 12 total stills and one special still that they use for the 1942 and the Real product. You know, that's the fundamentals. They're really, you know, the basic thing. It's pina, which is seven years about to grow, harvested, cut up, put in the autoclaves, shredded, fermented, distilled, and then either left to, to set to become the Blanco or aged for one of their older products. It's a really straightforward process, but still really quite fascinating. You know, when you're in the Don Julio tequila plant, you know, you smell both that fresh agave being cut up, the, the cooked agave with that, that, that syrupy smell, and then the, the distillation, the tequila. And those three smells just kind of come together and, and you can really pick that out in the glass. It's really it's really quite exceptional. But thanks for watching the, the Don Julio tour. Go ahead and like this video, which is uh, right down here, and subscribe to our Drink Spirits YouTube channel. Give us some comments. Tell us what you like. We keep tailoring these videos because you're giving the comments and you're telling us what you want to watch. I'm Jeff Kleinman with Drink Spirits. Thanks.